Let's take a hymn in 42, page 42. Immortal, invisible God, only wise. Hallelujah. Amen. Luke chapter 8 and verse 8. Luke 8, 8. Luke chapter 8. And I want us to read it together because it is a very important scripture that we are going to pray about. It's on the screen. After the count of two, we'll read it together. One to go. When he has said this particular truth, when he had expounded and opened this exact and precise revelation, he turned to them. He does hear. Let him hear. The story is about the sower. I mean, I can't get into all of that. We know the parable of the sower. The sower went out. Some seeds fell on rocking ground, stony ground. Some fell by the wayside. But the, 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 the seed that produced maximum was the seed that fell on good ground. And the Bible says it produced a hundredfold. So, the productivity was not based on either the sower or the seed. It was the ground. There are people today, no matter what you plant on them, they won't produce. Because they are not good ground. No matter what you... Listen, it's not about people around you. It's not even about your job. But you ask yourself, are you a good ground? If you are not a good ground, no matter what is planted, no matter the opportunity, no matter the connection, no matter who you meet or who you know, there is no positive outcome because you are not 
And we are going to cry to the God of heaven. We will cry. Because, see, eh, you can be under an anointing that is productive. But if your head is bad. Put your hand on your head. Say, my head. You will not reject prophecy. Listen to me. It can happen. Remove your hand now. Listen. When you, you how do you feel? How do you feel? Hi. Hey. I'm, I'm careful not to say some things. How do you feel that somebody has been around a structure, an organization, a system, a personality? You have been around that person for 10 years. You're never favored. Somebody got to meet that person less than one week and the person is favored. I mean the person. No, it's your head. It's your head. Good ground. Good ground. Words are spoken and instantly they manifest. On some other people, 10 years, they are still there. Nothing has happened. Good ground. We are in Nairobi, Kenya. And um, one of the sessions, a prophecy was given concerning a lady who was holding a, 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 photo, a photo of her sister. You may have watched that. A photo of her sister that the girl was mad on the streets of um, Canada. Her name was mentioned, mad on the streets of Canada. She was mad on the streets, walking on the street. Mad. Mad. That's Canadian madness. That's not, um, not our kind of madness. Madness there. And she was on the street mad. And words were spoken. By the next morning, she walked back to the house. Normal madness gone. And somebody else may have been in that same meeting. Waiting for things to happen. Nothing happened. Oh Lord. Make my life a good ground. Oh Lord arise. Make my life a good ground. Oh Lord arise. Make my life a good ground. Oh Lord arise. Make my life a good ground. Oh Lord arise. Make my life a good ground. Oh Lord arise. Make my life a say my father, my father. Shout it louder than that. In the name of Jesus. As I pray now. Oh Lord arise. Make my life a good ground. Parakwasa Katabarata Shatatarati Atirasa is a galaga is a galaga is a galaga Hey! Hey, my life become a good ground. My life be a good ground. My life. Shut up! 
In Jesus' name, may our lives become good ground. May our head not reject prophecies. Lift your hands toward heaven. I will lift your name above all names. Yahweh, my lover, I worship you. You patterned the Red Sea and made the barren fruitful. Igwe, hallowed be your name. Great and mighty King, that's who you are. I bless your name. Oh, great God, great and mighty King, that's who you are. I bless your name. Oh, great God, great and mighty King, that's who you are. I bless your name. Oh, great God, great and mighty King, that's who you are. I bless your name. I will lift your name above all names. Yahweh, my lover, I worship you. You parted the Red Sea and made the barren fruitful. Lift your hands. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. 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 Let us glorify. Let us glorify Emmanuel. I will glorify. Emmanuel, 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 Jesus.
I will glorify Emmanuel. I will glorify Emmanuel. 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 I will glorify Emmanuel, Emmanuel, I will glorify Emmanuel, Emmanuel, I will glorify Oh, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, I will glorify For the past two days, there's a song that just has been ministering to me. From east to west, no other God. From north to south, I say there is no, there is no other God. From east to west. No Jesus name. Amen. Let's clap our hands for the Lord. Amen. Let's be seated. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Romans chapter 9 and verse 13. Romans 9. Let's read it together. Romans 9 verse 13, if you have opened it, or you can see it on the screen. Are we ready? One, two, go. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. Can we take that again? As it is written, Jacob have I loved, Esau. Have I hated? This came from the mouth of Christ, of God. Before these children were born in the Old Testament. Divine rejection. I'm preaching on divine rejection. The God that I know is a loving God. The Bible says, for God so loved. The world. Was Esau part of the world? Talk to me. Was Esau part of the world? For God so loved the world. But Esau have I hated. This is serious. The God we know is a loving God. In Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3, he said, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Meaning, that love is inexhaustible. Jeremiah 31 verse 3. I've loved thee with an everlasting love. 
in John chapter 13, verse 1, the last phrase, he said, having loved his own that was in the world, he loved them unto the end. In 1 John 3, verse 1, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth not us, because he knew him not. John 15, 13, he said, greater love has no man than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friends. But Esau have I hated. In Romans 5, verse 8, he said, God commended his love towards us in that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. But the Bible says, Esau have I hated. The word of God is not contradictory if you decide to take a closer study. Does God reject people? Yes. Look at what he said about Esau. Esau have I hated. The New Living Translation and the NIV says, Esau have I rejected. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, Samuel was going from verse 1, God said to Samuel, don't mourn over Saul anymore because I've rejected him from being king. Don't cry. So go to Saul's house. Go to the house of Jesse and get me a son. And God, that was, Samuel rather had to remind God. He said, if I go to that place, Saul, imagine Saul was still king. And Samuel was on his way to anoint another king. It's like somebody sitting as a president and someone else is going to declare another person whilst the former is still in office. That's a crisis. So as he was on his, when God spoke to him, go there. He said to the Lord in verse 2, if Saul so, hears it, Saul so will kill me. God said, that's true. Let's plan. Saul was so wicked that God and Samuel had to plan how to handle him. You didn't get that. A man was so heartless and reckless that he took a prophet and the Almighty to strategize. So God said to Samuel, take an heifer in your hand and tell the elders that you are going there to sacrifice, then your life will be preserved. This is a deep revelation. That no matter who plans to kill you, if you carry something, their mind will change. No matter who plans to kill you, if you know the mystery of sacrifice, you shatter their expectation. There is no death sentence that sacrifice cannot cancel. Whether medical, whether witchcraft, whether diabolic, whether academical, it doesn't matter. Anything that looks like a sentence on your head, if you can take a sacrifice, you can take an effort. He said, and also tell the elders. So these are the two major components that delivers a man from onslaughts, assault, harassment of life. Your revelation of the power of sacrifice and your connectivity to leaders spiritually and those of higher ranking. Am I communicating here? Those of higher spiritual ranking. One of the biggest errors that we people commit is that we think that as believers we are all the same. By salvation we are all the same. By covenant there are seniors. There are people who have labored, who have paid price in their work with God. It's an error to line up yourself and say we are equals. Sir, every military uniform is the same. But ranks reveal who is ahead of who. In fact, there are certain uniforms that are only meant for generals. When you say you are a soldier, you are a military man, the first thing we do, we check your rank. So, the, the, the civilization we see today is people say, we are all children of God, we are all the same. We are not all the same, sir. No, we are not. There are people that God anoints higher than some. Uh, Hebrews 1 9, because thou art love righteousness, hated iniquity, wherefore God, even thy God has anointed you higher above thy fellow. So, this mentality you carry, we are all the same. 
you are all the same. You are all the same. We are calling on the same God. You want to see the blood of Jesus now wash you, it won't wash me. So I need to correct that. So he took a seed in his hand and got there. And this is what happened. Samuel was walking with the eyes of the flesh. And when Samuel saw the first guy come out in verse 7, Samuel saw the first guy come out with his broad chest and biceps and broad shoulders. Samuel said, hey! Because Samuel said the Lord's anointed is before him because Saul was taller than everybody. So Samuel thought that royalty and kinship was a functionality of how you are built up. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. That was, that was where Samuel was. Samuel was walking on based on what God said yesterday. Because when Saul came out, Saul was taller than everybody. Tall. The Bible says everybody in Israel from, they were below Saul's shoulder. They were taller, he was taller than everybody. Because you cannot lead people when you're on the same level with them. To lead people, there must be something you have that they don't have. I was, one day I was in America, I was connecting from one state to another state. So I was following up the election. It was a Senate election. I think they were done with their presidential. It was a Senate election. We were moving from one state in America to another state. So I sat down with some guys with tattoo and earrings. And um, obviously these are rich kids. You know, their parents are rich, obviously, American kids. And tattoo and earrings and rasters. I mean, they were just sitting by my side and... We are discussing, I was asking about the election, we are just talking. And I said, who, who are you supporting? There were two major candidates in that state, the state I was flying from. And they supported a very decent guy. And the other guy that was a rasta, that was, that I expected them to support their kind. No, that was my thinking. I was, they said, this one. All of them said, no, it's this guy, this guy, this guy. I said, what? I expected, they laughed. They said, we know, we know why you, do, you are saying that. As you're saying that because of how we look, I say yes. They say that's the problem. It cannot lead us if it's like us. I say, what's he gonna tell us? We'll meet him in the in the club, we'll meet him in the bar. He can't lead us. Something hit me. Something hit me. I, I kept quiet till we landed. Because they were, that was a message. I wish I'm talking to somebody. These are, these are children, children, 23, 24, 26, obviously rich kids. And they said, it can't lead us. When I said, I expect, they looked at themselves and they burst into laughter. And said, no, it's like us. It can't lead us. We need somebody who has mastered what we are struggling with. When the friends you have are friends that you have the same weakness, you are lonely. All of you meet in the bar. All of you meet in the club. All of you meet in the party. All of you meet in, in I mean, and those are people you call you. Anyone that cannot uplift you, the best people to connect with are people whose, whose strength is your weakness. And he got there. Look at verse, verse 7. Samuel was almost deceived. Look at verse 7. Verse 7. Verse 7. First Samuel 16. Verse 7. Go back to verse 6. And it came to pass, when they were come, that he looked on Eliab. Looked. Not that he heard. As he looked, his sight deceived him. And said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. And the Lord said to someone, look not on his countenance. Or on the height. Did you see that? So what, what, what was the deception? What was the deception? Because Saul was equally tall. He said, because I have, I'm trying to talk on divine, that God rejects people. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. Now God said, look not on his countenance. Now look at verse 8. Look at verse 8. Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither. Samuel didn't wait for God to tell him this time. He understood the mind of God. Neither had the Lord choosing. Now, go to verse 12. 
verse 12. And he sent and brought him in. And now he was ruddy and wither of a good, beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him for this is it. Look at this scripture very well. Memorize it. He was ruddy and wither of a beautiful countenance. But I go back to verse 6, verse 7 rather. Verse 7. Verse 7. The Lord said to Samuel, Look not on his countenance. Go to verse 12. He was of a beautiful countenance. <laughs> One came with a wonderful countenance. God said, look not on his countenance. Another came. God said, wow, what a beautiful countenance. Same God. When you try to think you know God, the more you discover you don't know him. That is why I laugh at people who try to judge people's work with God. No, only God knoweth those that are his own. The wonders in heaven, we are going to see some wonders in heaven. There are some people you never thought would be raptured, they'll be there. There are some people you never thought would make heaven, they'll be there. And there are some people you thought would make heaven, they will not be there. God accept, Bible says, Look not. You didn't know. Bring up verse 7 again. I'm not sure you understand that. Bring up verse 7. The Lord said to someone, look, look. Don't walk with the sight of the eyes on his countenance. Go to verse 12. He was of a beautiful con and countenance and goodly to look. One God said, don't look. The other God said, look. He is God. Sir. If we are to go by human metrics here, we are to go by human metrics and human standard, we will say this is not fair. Right? We will say this is not fair. For one man, you say don't look at him. Forget his countenance. I reject him. For another, look at him. God is God. He wasn't elected. He cannot be impeached. His standards are beyond your human understanding. That is why you have to be careful before you open your mouth on matters that have depth. On matters. God spoke in scripture. He said to Israel, thou shalt not be joined with an harlot. Don't be joined with an harlot. And he met a prophet. He said, go and marry a harlot. So how do you? See, spiritual matters be very slow to speak. Politics, discuss. Academic, discuss. Entrepreneurship, discuss. Business issue, discuss. The medical profession, run your mouth as you like. When it comes to spiritual matters, keep quiet because you can't understand God. His standards are high. Standards are high. God said, I have. First Samuel 15, 23. First Samuel 15, 23. First Samuel chapter 15 and verse 23. First Samuel 15, 20, 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So every rebel is a witch. Stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because the Lord has, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, what has happened? The Lord had also rejected thee from being king. Verse 26. Look at another rejection. 26. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return to thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected thee. Hmm. So God rejects people. Malachi chapter 1 and verse 3. Malachi 1. So God rejects people. I hated this all. This God speaking now. And laid his mountains and heritage, and his heritage west for the dragons of the wilderness. All the legacies of Esau. God said, I laid it as a waste for dragons to feast on. Because I hated him. What will God see in a man? And God will look at that man. They were still in the womb. Not born. Children have not been born. And God already had a preference. Listen to me. God has no favorites. But God has preferences. 
God has, you see, there are things if God wants to tell, wants to release certain message now, even if all of us hear from God, not all of us will hear that message. God will look for one person who is a preference, not a favorite. When you talk about favorite, your favorite is all, your favorite is always right. When you call somebody your favorite, whether right or wrong, you are with that person. God does not work like that. The day you cross the line, he changes his mind on you. So he has no favorite, but he has preferences. There are people God wants to, God looks around. He wants to raise up a millionaire in the, in the midst of his people. He look around, look around. He say, give this one. I know the state of his heart. There are people, if God give them one million, God will lose them and lose the money. God will lose them. They touch one million naira for the first time, 10 million naira for the first time. They will, they will bring their chair from, from house. And say, um, that's place Papa's chair is. I see some space there. Can they put my... <laughs> Can they put my chair by the side? We are not on... No, no, no. We are not on the same level. It's me and Papa that will be talking like man to man. <laughs> so God said, I have. So God has preferences. God has preferences. But he has no favorite. So for Esau... God already saw what he will do, what he will become, how he will live. So, what is the problem? God did not hate the person of Esau. God hated his ways. God did not hate Esau as a person. God hated his ways. God hated his character. God hated his attitude. <laughs> but you ask yourself between Jacob and Esau who should God be angry at their attitude huh? Jacob was a supplanter he started pulling his brother's legs like inside the womb once he came out before his brother was a supplanter uh -huh. When Jacob was done with, I mean, he ran from Esau, took all the stuff. We know the story. When he was returning back, God said to him, go back to your father's house. Go back to your father's house. While he was going, what Jacob did, Jacob put all his animals, donkeys, chariots, cattle, in their hundreds in front. He now put Leah, you know Leah, the wife he, he hated. He put the... Leah and his children immediately after the animals. Why? So that when Esau starts killing, before he finishes the animals, he will come to the wife he didn't like and the children. He now put Rachel's and Leah's slave. Leah had a, a maid. Put that one's children and herself behind her. Now put Rachel's slave in front. Now put Rachel and the children. He was last. What kind of father? Before they kill everybody. <laughs> Yet God said, Jacob, have I loved. This God. Even if you are not perfect, be sincere. There are people in church who are still taking alcohol and they don't lie about it. And there are people in church who take alcohol. They take taba. You know taba? You know taba? Snuff. Some people, there are some taba that are more tabacious than... <laughs> taba is in grades. Hallelujah. I, uh, you see, in, in growing up, this day is so annoying because this generation is arrogant. When we were younger, when an uncle sends you to go and buy cigarettes, you remember those days? You buy. When they finish smoking, they'll drop. You'll carry. Hey, my father is here. How can I say this kind of thing? <laughs> because he didn't, know, he didn't know all these things. My father has never smoked, has never drank in his life. So how do I stand and say this thing in front of him? When you are coming back, 
from where you ate uncle. Uncle will drop stick of cigarette. You know those, those small parts? You now take it. As you, are, as you are trying to smoke, correct slap from the uncle. Am I correct? They will tell you, are you mad? You think, you think this thing I'm doing, I like it. It was a generation that even if they were weak, they were honest. Oh, you are not getting what I'm saying. I am me. I am very adventurous. I have, I chop a button slap. An uncle said, he buy this, he buys it, I'm waiting, finish it. I said, this thing they are drawing. Let, as I try it back of my head, pa! come on, dro drop it down. What are you doing? Some of them were working for my father. He was not aware. They would come, bring back their bicycles from where they went to sell ice creams, went to sell all of that, and they called me, go and buy this. When they finish, heavy, they were not perfect, but they knew that what they were doing was not right. Somebody, else. but the generation we are in now, we even introduce children. You know what you are doing is bad. And you are ready to destroy other people. Uh, yeah. Am I, am I talking to somebody? So God hated the ways of Esau. So let's consider his ways. Genesis 25, 27. Genesis 25, 27. And the boys grew. He saw was a cunning hunter. A man of the field. Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. This is the first reason why God said he saw Abba hated. The first thing God hated about Esau. Esau was in a wrong profession. Esau was a hunter. Esau was a hunter. Esau was a hunter. Esau was. You say, Apostle, what do you mean? Is hunting a bad job? No, but not for Esau. Abraham was a rich man. Genesis 13 and verse 2. Abraham was very rich. Very rich in cattle, silver, gold. In the house of Abraham, there were thousands of cattle. Thousands of donkey, thousands of all kinds of animal. But in the midst of that, Esau left and was still hunting for animals. You know what I'm talking about? In the midst of abundance, Esau went to hunt for what was all over the house. Esau by hated. Does that reveal to you that even some of us we are hunting for the things God have already given us? God has said you will get married. God has said you will have children. God has said you will be rich. Now you are disobeying God in order to get that thing which God has said he has given you. Esau have I hated. There are people today who are ready to denounce Christ, denounce God, all in the name of marriage. Meanwhile, God has said, I created them male and female. They are, they are hunters, hunters, ready to compromise, ready to cut corners. They want money. They can do anything for money, including dropping their Bible. They are hunters. A generation that has a prize. Hunters. Hunters. My heart, from when I gave my life to Jesus, my heart is so glued to what God said he will give. To what God said he will do. The other day, I was somewhere, one of the wealthiest men in that country happened to be around. And he said, Apostle is here. I said, Apostle is here. Can I see him? And I was busy. They told me that the man is around. I said, I'm tired. He said, sir, you didn't hear the name we mentioned. So, so, so person. I said, of course, I've heard about him. He says, around. I said, I'm, I'm tired. I'm resting. I'm very, very tired. I have another session. But he wants to see you. I said, but I don't want to see him. I'm tired. I'm tired. Sir, did you hear the name we mentioned? I said, there is a name above every other name. I represent that name. Meeting that person, meeting that man, there is no way he won't carry a seed and say, I'm sowing to your life. But it, where I am, I know because of my connection to the word of God, I don't need to come out before seed meets me there. 
I am overwhelmed. That is why I will not bow to anybody. I am overwhelmed, too overwhelmed that God shall supply all. If I need it, the supply will come. I'm too overwhelmed with it. I'm not hunting. You that did, you, you will come to the vigil. You will, seven hours you are praying. Eight hours you are praying. Life in the spirit you are fasting. You saw opportunities to make money wrongly. You, have, you, you, you turned your, your, your face. You saw opportunities to be rich wrongly. You turned your face. Now because all of those covenants, you did that for Christ. Now because of marriage, you forgot all the sacrifices you have paid for Christ. The one young man who is not even ready to marry you anyway is making you violate the covenant you have made with God. Why are you hunting for what God has in abundance? Why Esau was how can yeah. Do you see why? Hold on. Do you see how nasty Esau was? He said Jacob was a man that dwelled in tents. He was always indoors. Can I shock you? When Isaac said, "Go and get me venison. Let me eat. Prepare meat, porridge for me. Let me eat." There was meat at home. There was abundance of meat at home, but he's already had a, a hunting mentality. Jacob just went from the house, brought one. Esau still ran outside again. The hunting spirit has entered. Uh, there are students, even if they give them, the school decides to give them the answer sheet, they will still carry something in their pocket. It, is, it has entered them. I was watching something on my phone during the week. All these skit makers are funny. I saw a skit. A man and a woman were on the bed. And the woman shouted, my husband is around, my husband is around. The, the guy jumped and ran under the wardrobe. The woman jumped and ran. Only for they remember that they were both husband and wife. You know what I'm talking about. The man jumped and hid himself. The woman said, ran. Later, the woman stopped. But you're my husband. He said, oh. Cheating has entered their blood. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He has entered their blood that they ran to hide before they now remember that they were married. What a generation. Somebody, some of you don't know why I don't baptize people myself. Pastor Luis Arnold does that. Because there are some people on baptism day, I almost slap somebody. So I have to control my temperament. They were baptizing a guy. You know this pipe, this pipe, they smoke. This, this, how they call it? This, eh? Pipe. Not cigarette, this pipe. This one, elderly people smoke. I don't know, whatever name. As they dip the guy in the water, myself and some, as we dip the guy, something came out of his pocket. And we brought it out, it was pipe. Baptism day. So we baptize him and baptize the pipe. I was, I had rolled up my trousers, I was at the middle of the, of the river. So we saw it, we held it, we brought him out. See what he said, ah, no verse. What happened? He said, as, as with the call river, I said, make I take the last one. <laughs> I almost, I was angry. I said, you carry pipe, come, baptize him. Now the last one, I won't take a beg. I turned to those by me, I said, I'm too angry. Come, come. When I was leaving, I said, this is the last day. <laughs> because I'm not sure how the temperament would There are people that, they, some people steal what they don't need. I'm telling you, it has, sin has entered their, their components. How can somebody steal one, one leg of shoe? One leg. No, to do what with it? It's a part of them. He 
saw. Isaac said, get me venison. Go, go and prepare something. Go to the kitchen. Esau still went outside to God. Say, this one, this one, mm -mm, this guy. There was abundance of animals to be slaughtered at home. Esau still went outside. Divine rejection. That is when how God feels. When he sees what he has promised you. What he has said in the kingdom, once you are born again, has become your inheritance. You are going to the devil to scavenge. You are going to the devil to scout. Who can kill you? You are going to the devil for protection. You are going to the devil. Am I talking to somebody here? And there are people under the sound of my voice. It has become a lifestyle. Once they need anything, they have to sell their body to get it. Once they need anything, they have to cut corners. It's a hunting spirit. How many of you know hunters are captains of hide and seek? You know that? Hunters. They are very smart. In what? Yeah. That's what some of you are doing. Once you, you become a hunter, the spirit of hide and seek enters you. Very smart. Ah, you are watching. And God says, there is abundance. There is abundance. There is abundance. There is abundance. A hunter depends on his skill for survival. A hunter depends on the field for survival. But Jacob depended in the capacity to stay with his mother. Ayah. Jacob stayed back. No wonder said, God said, Jacob have I loved. Jacob stayed at home. For he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Why people are running around clubs and running around, around parties? <laughs> Someone decided to say, I'm going to stay back, staying back in God's presence. When we started carrying the Bible and following God, people mocked us. But what, what honor would I have seen in my life? That is more than the honor I see now. What honor? What honor? <laughs> what honor? That presidents of nations, mayors of counties will call you father. What honor? But when we started following this God and became addicted to church, we are called names. Stay in the tents. Don't be a hunter. Stay in the tents. It doesn't matter how they are comparing you. Your parents say, look at your friend. You are carrying Bible. Tell them I'm not a hunter. I'm not a hunter. Look at your friends. Look at, your, look at what they have. Look at the cars they have bought. You are not a hunter. God has promised you provision. He has promised you abundance. He has promised you surplus. Stay with him. Stay in the secret place. Stay. Stay, 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 stay. He was a hunter. He was a hunter. Number two, he says he, he was in the open country. He was a man of the open country. He never stayed at home. So Esau never understood the power of the secret place. But Jacob dwelt in tents. The power of the secret place. When you stay away from God, things run away from you. When you stay away from God, things run away from you. Not to be released to God is to be released to the worst. So when you see people come to the house of God, you think, sir, The reform of highness is to be connected to the most high. The reform of highness. The reform of intoxication is to be intoxicated to speak in tongues. When alcohol is your influence, you end in the gutter. But when speaking in tongues is your passion, you stand before kings. Every drunkard has a destination. 
the gutter. Every drunkard, for every smoker, you have a mentor. He's not alive anymore. He ended up wearing pants. He was a guru. And he was, he was a philosophical man. Very deep man. But he was a mentor. So when smoking is your passion, pant is your future. Wearing, <laughs> wearing pant publicly is your future. And there are people today, today, today. And not, you see what we talk about being in the secret place. It's, it has three branches. Number one, the secret place of prayer. Everybody must have an indwelling place. In your room, in your house, which is your prayer altar. You must have a place indoors. You must be a person that knows how to go indoors and call upon God. You must know God indoors. Matthew 6, 6, I think. He said, thy father which is in secret shall reward thee openly. When thou prayers enter, prayers enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret. Where is God? Where is God? Here is God. God is in secret. And he shall reward, and sees in secret, shall reward thee openly. So the first element of divine presence is having a secret place life. The second is your connection to the house of God. Having a secret place life. Number two, your connection to the house of God. There are people, once they walk into church, something is... Is carrying them out. There are people that have never sat down in church for three hours. Straight up. They will go out. They will come back. They will go out. They will come. For the flimsiest of reasons. The tiniest of excuse. Why? Because something is fighting their ability. And that time you are stepping out. Is when your Rema word comes. That's your Kairos moment. That is where a revelation that would have changed your life. Hits. There are people. We've seen that over time. Is when God mentions their name, they say they went to pee. They went to pee. Some people, that's when they are sleeping inside the service. Why? Because something. Jesus! Luke chapter 4 verse 16 was a committed church member. Don't let people lie to you that it's not, it's not going to church. It is, it's not going to church. It's his heart. Who are you going to listen to? The word of God. He came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. It was a, Jesus saw going to the physical place of worship as a tradition. And as a Christian, you are following Jesus. You think Jesus, who was God on earth, could not stay at home? What does Jesus need anybody to teach him? You don't teach chemistry, chemistry. You don't take chemistry to sit down. Or you tell Isaac Newton to sit down in a physics class. Are you what I'm talking about? But he was God. Yet he sat down. Because he was a model to tell us that you can't say you are a child of God and sit at home. Hebrews, 11, Hebrews 10, 25. Hebrews 10, 25. Hebrews 10, forsaken. He said, not forsaken. The assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Not forsaken. Not forsaken. Number three. The third element of divine presence is your connectivity and loyalty to the family of God. Whether you are inside the church or outside the church, you are loyal to your brother and sister in faith. Whether you are inside the church Outside the church, you are loyal. A fellow church member is not just a church member, it's a brother. A fellow church sister is not just a church sister, she's a sister. Your loyalty to the body of Christ. 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 <clears throat> when
when you are loyal, it's a crime for the church to be attacked. And you as a member of the church, you open your mouth and join those attacking the church. It's a shame. It's like they are throwing your family under the bus and you join those attacking your family. It's a shame. There are many of you, you have sisters you are not proud of. True of us. Talk to me, true of us. Some of you have brothers you are not proud of. True of us. But you join outsiders to fight them. The guy fought somebody, injured the person, and they are, he said, leave him, he's my brother. You join him to fight. When you get home, you face him. That's the dynamics of raising, raising family. But today when the church, when somebody, you don't do that. In, this is not our culture. It's not our tradition in the body of Christ. How many people today came to church, the house of God, with bruises. Just bruises. But now they've left the church with scars. Because we are in a generation where people enter the church and they can't find safety. In fact, some people left church before they had peace. Some people left the house of God. That is not what God expects of us. He was a man of the upper. Something took him. Look at the prodigal son. The prodigal son looked at his father and told the father to his face, give me the portion that falleth to me. He was a young boy. Something was pushing him out. The story of the prodigal son tells us the disadvantage of staying far from God. It tells us the negative effect of being estranged and disconnected from your source of life. The prodigal son was in a hurry to leave God's presence. Was in a hurry to disconnect from his father. Was in a hurry. Was in a hurry. Was it something was pulling him out? We don't talk like this. Yeah, if not church, I know what I would have become. You would have become nothing. 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 You'd have become nothing. If not this church, church, I know we are for day. You for day know where. Some young ladies say, if not church, eh, <laughs> what I would have done. If not the fear of God. <laughs> the fear of God is actually what gave your life color. Okay, let me explain. Let me explain. Can I explain? As a young man, you are enjoying some level of honor. Or as a young lady, you are in the church as a protocol worker, as an ordained minister, you are not married, as a choir member, as an usher. Because of your love and fear for God, you have all kinds of men who want your attention. So you now think that they want your attention because of your humanity. No, it's because of that thing that's covering you. If you're in the world, you won't get this kind of attention because nothing covers you. But there's a glory that they have seen that is pulling them to you. And when they can truncate that glory, they are done. They take a walk. I don't know if somebody's following me, sir. Yes. The prodigal son, he took all his money and squandered with his friends. No investment, squandered, wasted. Because success has many relatives, but failure is an orphan. When he was broke, everybody left him. People celebrate you when you have something that attracts them. True celebration is when you are nothing and people still stay around you. You must have virtues and qualities that even if you don't have money, you still keep people. You must have virtues and qualities that even if you don't have money, you don't have intelligence, you don't have anything, you can still keep people. When you are a lady, that all you market is beauty and your body. You are empty. You are just a, a, a container that will soon be discarded. There must be a quality that a person sees and he doesn't even see what is external. There must be an internal quality that is a compelling force. It's beyond being a graduate. It's beyond being a graduate as a man. There are many graduates that are jobless. But there are qualities people find in a person. They keep you as their worker. There are many graduates that are thieves. Many graduates that are liars. Many graduates that are very divisive. They can cause problems. But there are people that are graduates 
and they have they can think. They are creative. There is something about you. We had a leadership summit and my friend was teaching and was talking about he's into entrepreneurship and all. He went into a Google company one time where they make iPhone and the rest. He was looking at different offices and he saw a particular office. There was a way they did the office. He was wondering. And he peeped and looked at the people there. They just stood on the spot and gazing towards the spot. He was wondering who are these people? They said these people are hired. Their own job is to think. Their own job is to meditate and perceive. We have prepared the iPhone 16, iPhone 15. They have to stay there for a week or two to perceive if it is time to release it to the market. Even if you have prepared it, you have done everything, they just sit down. They are not, they are, they are not demonic. Oh. They stay there to connect with the atmosphere. They just meditate. They say, wait. You know, if they are paying you to think, you must think well. Oh. They don't burn you well not to think well. <laughs> so, the only is told, are you, are, you, are you seeing qualities? They are not talking. They are just thinking. Such people are people whose mind is free, not polluted. Since their mind is now their source of wealth, they guard it, they protect it, and they purge it. If you can allow your mind to float in spiritual matters, your mind will be healthy. If you refuse to allow all the junk into your mind, all the negative things, all the rubbish you watch online, all the things that are not your business, if you can sanctify your mind when you shut your eyes to meditate, it will be productive. But your mind is not productive because there are too many junks inside. As you close your eye, you remember a movie. As you close your eye, it's one horror film. As you close your eye, it's one thing you saw on Instagram. As you close your eye, all you are seeing is somebody doing something on TikTok, 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 TikTok. As you, because you have, your mind is, is, is full with so much business. Allow a passage, a free way. Allow your mind to be free. Allow your mind to be released. Allow your mind. Am I communicating now? Someone said to me, you are a strong man. I said, I know. You are courageous. I said, I know. He said, ah, you built. I said, first of all, my father was a soldier. My mother was a policewoman. So imagine the kind of combination of blood. All right? But let me tell you, all of those are not my strength. My strength is this. I guide my mind. You see all those things about me on social media? I don't read it. All those things they are saying about me, I don't watch it. That is how I'm able to stay, stay normal. Some of you are watching on my behalf. <laughs> me personally, I don't. I have sacked somebody in this church. I have sacked somebody for forwarding something to me. Papa, see what they are saying. And I said, what is your name? He told me. I fired him. So the people around me don't tell me such things. Even if they see it, they are not permitted to mention it. Are you fond I'm talking about? That is how I'm able. You think I will see those things? Read them. And I'll be okay. Somebody say, you are not a human being. You are not a human being. You are a spirit. You are diabolic. You are demonic. And you know you are a human. Uh, you will go to his house. Say, I'm coming to your house. <laughs> I know I will be saying the wrong things, the wrong things. I will be delivering. Somebody said to me, Apostle, they brought out a list of certain ladies they say you have been with. I said, oh, put it there. He said, it's one guy. I said, is his mother's name there? He said, no. I said, the list is not complete. <laughs> if his mother's name is not there, then the list is not complete. The guy said, ah, ah, papa. I said, you see why I said you should not be telling me all these things? 
because I will say the thing that will give some, somebody depression. I'm from out you. You will talk, I'll keep quiet. No. My own talk, my own talk, eh? It's like bomb. Boom! There are things that have happened in this country. People will call me, don't talk. Don't talk, don't talk. That's what I say because you, you don't talk normal talk. I just so don't tell me anything. Don't tell me anything. So that is how to stay sane. So imagine you, you carry your phone. Snake swallowed money. You want to read it. Are you okay? Can, can snake swallow money? Rabbit swallowed 25 million. Eh? Make a check up. What are you checking in that kind of thing? So that thing, if you, you check that thing now, your mind is polluted. An innocent rat that was walking around your house, you are suspecting it. You are so you put it. It don't swallow. It don't swallow. It don't swallow. Because of the things. Guard your mind. You are going through your phone. There are suggestions. You know them, right? When is not what you are looking for, wipe it. Go online, check the things that matter to your destiny. Why some people are surfing the net, some other people are studying and coding. Some other people are making money. The same data you buy to check gossip, somebody buy that, data, buy that same data to make money. With all the stories you have heard about life, our one man went to carry one woman from the husband's house. And because the husband doesn't have money, he has money. They will paint the story and make somebody a victim. Say, hey, yeah, this world now, wow. That's how you go from that story. That's the truth. You are right. It happened to me. Somebody sent me a video of a snake coming out of the toilet. You remember that period? Sir. Every time, whether you agree or not, some of it happened to you. If you are using the toilet, you are looking. <laughs> Did it happen to some of you? Uh -huh. As you release more, you go dress. <laughs> you release. <laughs> you, you see, the, you release another, you are checking. You are there in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the, <laughs> you carry disinfectants against snakes and put in all the toilets. Yeah. Why? Because of your mind. Keep your heart. Proverbs 4.23. For out of it. Jesus didn't say, let not your legs or your head or your hand. Let not your heart. Be troubled. Number three. And I'll pray. Are you getting something at all? Esau. Have I hated. Divine rejection. Genesis 35, 20, 25 and verse 32. Genesis 25, the third reason why God rejected and hated Esau. Genesis 25, 32. Esau said, Behold, I'm at the point to die. What profit shall this bed try do to me? Esau was hungry. Hungry. And met his brother. And the brother was preparing a red pottage. Very red. Excess tomatoes and plenty oil. And when he looked at it, the brother said, I'm hungry. He said, okay, before I give you, give me your birthright. Is that how they give birthright? A wise person will know that that statement is a deep one. He didn't say, you will pay me later. Give me your birthright. He just said, what is birthright? Carry. The third reason why God frowned at Esau was Esau treated spiritual matters with levity. Sp treating spiritual matters with recklessness. Give me your better. What is better? Carry better. Right. What is better? Right? Carry better. Right. What is better? Right? You are a young man. You walk into the midst of your friends and they are all taking weed. Take it. They say, I, say, I, say, I, say, I I'm a Christian. What do you Take. And that's how you took it. All your covenant gone. All your principles gone. You drew one. <sighs> you give them back. So all your, 
months and weeks of fire night, prayer, life in the spirit, all in one minute, you sold it out. Strictly spiritual matters. I have seen people in the other religion. They are fasting. You can't tempt them. You cannot tempt them. I've seen men in the world of business. They are talking. You bring alcohol before them, they push it aside. They don't just, um, they will push it, take this thing from, from me. So I say, I don't drink. He said, but it's not for you. He said, don't put it in, in front of me. I don't drink. But there are Christians, they will put that thing there, they'll keep quiet. So they snapped a picture of you and there was a bottle of alcohol in front of you. You don't drink, but it was there. But you were too, you were trying to be correct. You couldn't open your mouth to tell them, take this thing from me, I don't take it. I don't take it. Spiritual matters should be handled with care. Spiritual matters are fragile matters. What is the better right to know? Esau was hungry. He threw away his seniority because of a temporary situation. Don't take permanent decisions on temporary situations. Don't take permanent decisions on temporary situations. Don't downplay covenant principles. Don't downplay covenant principles. It destroys glorious destinies. Don't downplay covenant principles. It destroys glorious destinies. Don't downplay. Don't let somebody talk down your work with God. Don't let someone make you feel you are, you are wasting time being connected to, to God. Downplaying spiritual principles. Rubbishing your covenant, your tenants of faith. This one never knew. All he needed was to go through that phase of hunger. Can I tell you something? Hunters are, are hardly hungry. Because they always have what to eat. A wise Esau would have known that it's a matter of time. Hunger is a phase. Am I communicating here? But Esau said, I want to die. Sir, before you get, before hunger kills you, it will take days. Hunger cannot kill you in a few hours. You have not eaten in the morning, so you die in the afternoon. Does not hunger that kill you? You know what kill you. You have not eaten in the morning, so you die. There are some things that you sold your spiritual bed right for. Only patience would have brought you out of it. Some things that if you were patient, you would have come out of it. But you sold your bed right. I told us a story about some students who were writing an examination, a YEC exam. And there were three days left for the expiration of the date. A young girl who was a believer had not paid. So a, a teacher met her and said, come and see me. She went to the staff office. And the teacher said, uh, how old are you? The girl said she was 16. And he said, come to my house. The girl said, to do what? She said, are you a child? Don't you know what you do in the house? The girl said, no, sir, no. I've not done it before. I'm, I'm born again. The man laughed, brought out money. He said, this is money for your enrollment. If you agree to do it with me, I'll give you the money. The girl said, I'm a Christian. My mother is a Christian. I won't. She left. Two days more, our friends were pressuring her. You'd have collected this money and done this thing. See now, you are not writing for the exam. The girl was crying. Just a day left before it expired. She went to the man's place. She was a virgin. The man messed her up. Gave her money. She went. The very day they were to announce those who have not paid, the, the proprietor of the school walked in. That the school have decided because of the performance of five students to enroll for them. When they called the name, she was number one. Money was in her hand to pay. She had messed up herself. Few months later, her body system changed. She was telling her friends, she doesn't know what's going on. She was falling sick. They went to do a pregnancy test, she wasn't pregnant. They did another test on her blood, she was HIV positive. What a little patience would have sorted peer pressure. There are people that will say that even if the exam will go, let it go. You are treating you are, that thing that you are doing for God. That life you are living for God. That thing you are doing for God that you have no value for has a prized destiny. There's a tag attached to it. 
Am I talking to somebody here? I just preach the gospel here. I just preach. I just do what I think is right. I don't even think I'm, 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 I'm doing the best. I just preach. My own preach. I tell people, you, you don't have to pay money to, 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 to get prophecy. I see all those things in us. I didn't know people were watching me. Observing me. There are people I have met. Big people. They say, it's not your prophecy that attracted us. It's your sincerity. You say, you are stubborn. No, you are very stubborn. But you saw a sincere person who is not out to rip off people. You are not out to milk people. You are not out to take people's money. I say, ah. I say, but I'm, I'm not supposed to. They say, you don't understand. We have seen things. We have seen things. Just live a good life. There is somebody watching you. You are not aware. Just be a kind person. There is somebody observing you. In those days, there are mothers that will suggest ladies for their sons. They are watching them. They are observing them. Just in that office, do the right thing. There is somebody taking notes. Refuse to join people to steal. There is somebody observing you. Even among the thieves, there is honor. You, you have never heard of it before, that there is honor among thieves? There are thieves and there are thieves. We had that testimony now. There was a set of thieves that stole. Then thieves came to thief a thief. <laughs> there is somebody observe. Your, 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 your pride is your work with God. Your pride as a believer is your work with God. It's not your expertise. It's not your academic qualification. It's the character that has been formed by your reason of covenant principles. There is a, a, a lifestyle that has been configured at which I'm talking to somebody right now. Hunger. Hunger. What distress great men are small things. Hunger. Hunger. Anything too cheap is not free. If it's too good to be true, it's not true. Anything you see that's too good, is too easy. Look again. You have never seen 10,000 in your life. And somebody's ready to give you 200,000. All I want to do is to see you. And you are screaming that it's a breakthrough. That's not a breakthrough. That's a beautiful cage. What did I say? A, uh, it's a cage, but it is a, bu it is a beautified cage. No matter the metal that makes up the cage of a dog, the dog is still restricted. Yeah. That quality, that character that has been formed and configured by your work with God is your prized possession. Hear me and hear me well. God hated, I'll continue next service. God hated the ways of Esau. Because Esau treated spiritual man, your birthright for porridge. Your purity for house rent. Your work with God just to meet a need. Spiritual matters. Do you know there's something called it doesn't matter? Spirit of it doesn't matter. In it doesn't matter, there are a dozen matters. In it doesn't matter, there are a dozen matters. The spirit of it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Who is righteous? Who is righteous? Who is pure? Even the Pope, the Pope, the Pope, the Pope. Who is pure? There are people that the enemy makes them justify. I'm speaking to you today. Any, any virtue you've traded on the altar of carelessness, like a dasico laxity, any virtue that has left you on the altar of carelessness, today I ask for restoration. I ask for restoration. I ask for restoration. Be upstanding. 
I want to pray for you. We are going to take two prayers now. He was hunting for what God has provided. My God, my Father, while I stray far from my home, all I from sin. Oh, teach me from my heart to say that we That will be done. That will be done. Teach me from my heart to say. That will be done. Keep me true. Lord Jesus, keep me true. Keep me true. Lord Jesus, keep me true. There is a race that I must. There are victory to be won. Victory to be won. Give me power. There is a race, there is a race that I must run. There are victory to be won. There are victory to be won. Give me power. Every hour. To be true. There is a race, there is a race I must run. against the spirit of carnality. Materialism. What is carnality? Carnality is anything that slows or quenches your love for God. Carnality. Carnality is the spirit of worldliness. Spirit of, when you are too addicted to your handset, you have become carnal. Time to study, you are on the phone, you have become carnal. Carnality. The, way, the attention you give your phone, if you give God's word like that, you'd have been on fire. The time you spend on your phone, if you spend it on the throne, you'd have been royalty. Anything that takes more of your attention than God has become an idol. Carnality. You can't spend one hour in prayer, but you can spend five hours watching movies. That's carnality. 
anything that takes more of your time than God, you are going to pray, Lord, deliver me from the spirit of, to be carnally minded is death. Carnality. All your discussion, if it's not fashion, if it's not movie, nothing godly. How can you be in the car? You are traveling to Ibadan, traveling to Benin, traveling to Lokoja with somebody, five hours, nothing like gospel. And the economy of the country in Abuja, in Abuja, the election, the election, the election. this is a believer. The person talk, 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 three hours, no gospel. From your mouth. Canality. This thing you are seeing now, this Saturday, or this, this manifestation of God, is not yet, it's not uh, overnight. It's years of identifying with God. There was a time, sir, in this town, if I go to the park, they don't let me enter a car. I'm entering. They say, hey, no, 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 Pastor, come, 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 come. I say, but I said, God, we're not the carry, we're not the carry. I say, but I said, so that you go disturb us from Poly Gate, go reach New Bini. I said, but he never fool. He's not fool. Calm down. I'll be outside. I say, ah, I don't know what I do. One day I went on the road. As I was stopping the car, the man was about to carry me. Another driver came over, took him. <laughs> no carry him, oh. you know, go hear what? No carry him, oh. The man said, ah, what do you do? He said, say, enter. You, you have your money. I say, yes. Enter. You go pay. Say, yes. See, the way everybody, they say, me cannot carry. Pay me, pay me first. So I paid him. I paid him. I have not moved. I started preaching. I was preaching. I was preaching. It was quiet. I'm sure I was thinking I will soon end. It doesn't know me. I end when the journey ends. That's where I end. <laughs> I was preaching. I was preaching. I get to the Ekpoma. I just say from Ekpom from Awuchi to Ekpoma. I'm like 100 naira. See your balance. Come down. I said, wait, you're preaching, not the finish. I said, no. I was dropped on the road. I had extra money. <laughs> they carried me again. The next vehicle, I continued the preaching. Somebody must hear this preaching. And God now said, no. You deserve not to be on the road. Take car. No. People will hear you. I mean, it's a known thing. Those, I see some of the drivers now, and I, we see each other, we are laughing. See, now that you be this, I for they carry you that time, oh. <laughs> ah. It's over time of identifying with God. Nothing should kill your faith. I reject the spirit of carnality in my life. Anything I'm contending my love for God, I reject, I reject, I reject. Anything contending my love for God, I reject the spirit of carnality in my life. I reject. Say, my father, my father. My father, my father. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. As, I as I begin to pray, I reject, I reject. the spirit of carnality in my life. My life. Open your mouth and fire your prayers.
for his presence. Passion, hunger, hunger. The more I spend time with you, the more I want to spend time. Passion! Passion. Ah! Where are the youths? Where are the youths? Where are the teenagers? Where are the youths? There were days we are indoors for five days. We will not see the sun. What's happening to this generation? Five days, we won't see the sun. There are times we entered into God's presence on a Tuesday. We are out the next week Tuesday. That's why we came out to see how people are. Two days, three days, those were normal. Entering to the closet for three days, it was a normal experience, normal. I remember one time I went to went somewhere to go and pray. I was there for nine days. I came back. Everybody, I'm not seeing some people. Anyone that shook my hand fell down. Anyone that hugged me fell down. Anyone that embraced fell down. It was as I came into Brendan when everybody was down. I had to go back to pray. Father, reduce this thing. Please, sir. So that I can talk to people. We were not. We are, not, we are not going to the presence because we wanted power. We are just enjoying there. 12 hours, 14 hours. We finish, we study. We study, we sleep. We wake up, we study. We study, we pray. You come out after nine days. And your whole atmosphere is lightning and thunder. One of such meetings, I came down to minister in the church in Jetu. Every but not one, plus pastor, plus this, every everybody people went down the chairs started going down it was a wind boom literally you, you, you could feel it move your clothes wind boom. you could see people's clothes the wind moving their clothes and i was begging the people say hold the pillar i don't want anybody to be on the ground hold the pillar hold it from pillar pa the whole to, from road everywhere, you knew things were happening. We are preaching. Where's it? We are preaching. Was it Tanzania? Tanzania. The power of God hit the place. They were rushing students. There was a school, maybe across the road. They were rushing students with uniform far away into the venue. It was a Muslim school. They were carrying students, rushing there. What happened? They were in their classrooms. 
we were preaching power. They didn't know what was going on. The teacher just saw everybody falling down in the class. On the floor. The next the teacher's back hits the wall. Teacher landed. They had to start investigating. And they traced the place and saw a hall. People were on the ground. They said, okay, what is happening here? It looks like that one. So they went there and started bringing people. We saw them rushing, rushing with uniform, rushing students. What happened to the youths? On the phone, chatting, chatting. See the distraction now? And that's why I teach my biological children every day. You can never be young twice. Maximize this opportunity. So that when you become a mother and a father, you can look back to your days of youth and you can say, I spent it on fire. Passion for his presence. Kata yata. I can tell you experiences, sir. I can tell you passion. Passion. Who is ready to pray? Drive me into your presence. Give me passion to stay there. Drive me into your presence. Give me passion to stay there. Drive me into your presence. Give me passion to stay. My father, my father. In the name of Jesus, as I begin to pray, drive me into your presence. Give me passion to stay there. Open your mouth and fire prayers. Oh, <laughs> 
Zagadaga, 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 In Jesus' name. And your name is Alpha. You are Omega. At the mention of your name, every knee must bow. At the mention of your name, every tongue confess. You are the covenant keeping God. There is no one like you. And your name is Alpha. You are Omega. At the mention of your name, every knee must bow. At the mention of your name, Every tongue confess You are the covenant keeping God There is Covenant keeping God There is no one like you There is no one like you I am that I am I am As it There is no one. There is no one like you. Your name is Alpha. Omega. Omega. Ageless. Ageless. Changeless. Changeless. I call you Almighty. not be rejected by you we reject the haunting spirits that will not keep scavenging for things you've already provided I pray for passion for your presence the grace to treat spiritual matters with caution and care with reference it deserves May this message be a blessing to our lives as we apply them for our next level. In Jesus' name. Amen. Take your seat. All heavens declare the glory of the risen lamb 
Who can compare? With the beauty of the Lord. Forever you will be The Lamb upon the throne I gladly bow my knees oh, To worship you alone Forever Worship you. I love you, Jesus. I love you. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I praise you. I praise you. Oh, Lord. I praise you, I praise you, oh, in my life, Lord, I see what you were doing one more time. I lift my voice in praise of your name. I lift my voice in praise of your name. Holy Spirit, we see, we love you, we praise your holy name. Thank you, Father. Let my life become an altar. Take me to the altar till I become an altar. Your secret place. That's what I want to be. I receive that grace, that passion. Holy Ghost, make me your raw material. Refine me. To be used for your beauty, just for you and for you, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, make me a raw material, refine me to be used for your beauty, just for you and for you, oh. This is my heart's cry, Holy Ghost. Yeah, my heart's cry, Holy Ghost. Just for you to be more like you is all I pray. This is my heart's cry, Holy Ghost. Yeah, my heart's cry, Holy Ghost. Just for you. 
believe in miracles. But the reason for ministry and this church is not just for what God will do in your life, is to teach you how to follow him. Because you need to know more about this God. You need to know about him. So that your life begins to increase in your knowledge of God. When you know about him, the very things that appeared as a need will become met naturally. This is my heart cry, Holy Ghost. Hear my heart cry, Holy Ghost. Just for you to be more like you is all I pray. This is my heart cry, Holy Ghost. Hear my heart cry, Holy Ghost. Just for you to be more like you is all I pray. Just for you to be more like you is all I pray. Just for you to be more like you. Amen. Clap your hands and sit down. There's someone, please listen to me. There's a wedding that is being prepared for that I saw. Your sister, her name is Naomi. They are preparing for our wedding. This month, I'm talking of this month. Is it you? This month. This is between 26 and 20. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The counsel of the wicked is frustrated. In the name of Jesus. I, I, I see in the spirit realm. What the enemy meant for evil, God turned it around for good. Yeah. And it's not just your sister. Please, your family, tell them that I said they need to come together. Take a day to fast and pray. Are you following me? Manipulation. Rhoda. My name is Rhoda. Roland. That's my father's name. Roland. Yes, sir. He's late. Please, they have to pray. They have to pray. You. I know I'm talking about your sister, but even you pray. <laughs> because 
I saw you teaching inside the classroom. Yes, sir. I'm a teacher. You are teaching now? Yes, sir. No, it's not now. You are teaching now. You were teaching before you started teaching now again. Yes, sir. Yes, there sir. was a place you were teaching. Yes, sir. Yes. The place you were teaching before is almost better than where you are now. I told when it you. comes to money. Yes, but sir. let me explain what I mean to you. On your own, you left. Yes, sir. Not that they, threw, they drove you. No, no, no. Something just came on you. You left. Yes, sir. You left before you realized that you have left. Yes, sir. You don't know why you left. Yes, sir. So you are somewhere now. Let me pray with you. Who is Amos? My eldest brother. Huh? My eldest brother. Who is Ruth? My elder sister. Stand up. <laughs> now, there are decisions you take, eh? You think you know what you are doing. You don't know what you are doing. Yes, yes, yes. One of the strengths of manipulation is to make you think you are right. It's like false teachers. You know what they call false teachers? People that twist the Bible. They must first know the Bible. False teachers are very good with scriptures. They can quote scriptures. They can quote scriptures. But how you know false teachers is that four things. Number one, they downplay supernatural power. See what is what is miracle? I leave that. They down. That's how you, you catch them. Number two, they use scriptures to fight. Scripture to them is like weapon. Number three, they always find fault in what people say. I'm giving their qualities. The first is that they downplay supernatural. If you tell them that that miracle, say, which miracle? It doesn't exist. Yeah, that's how you catch them. So it, they can convince you. They will quote plenty, plenty of scripture to prove a point. You cannot be a false teacher if you are not conversant with scripture. You must be very conversant. But they will downplay supernatural. When you tell them that miracle money, they say, what, what, what miracle money? Is God central bank? Yes. Well, is God central bank? How can he print money? Is God road safety? But it delivers people from accident. Is God a pilot? But it delivers people from plane crash. With God, all things are possible. They downplay supernatural. They are very logical. And they attack. By the time you say one thing, they will come out to, uh, to tell you that you are wrong. That's how you catch them. Because true knowledge of the word of God accommodates. It's not puffed up. It accommodates. That's when you have the virtues of the spirit. Just about the balance. We know this thing. You don't know nothing. Alright? So, those are how you catch them. Attack. Everybody's wrong. H-O-D. Spiritual matters. This thing is real. Spirit's husband is real. Oh. Spirit's husband is real. I was in a place, eh? In a dose state, they call it Owa East. They call it Otuo. Eh? I was there, I called out a lady. She will get pregnant. Pregnancy will get to nine months. As they are rushing her to the labor room, baby will disappear. When the matron check her, her body has expelled a baby. You know what I'm talking about? Her parts, everything is open like somebody who has given birth. But where is the child? They're using your common sense. Leave spiritual matters alone. Our body, it showed that has expelled the baby. Where is the baby? Nine times. Then prophecy picked her. She was already pregnant. So she, she knew it was going to happen again. I said, not this one. You will give birth to this one. You will carry the child. As I was talking, you were just looking at me. The husband was crying. Now, it takes a lot of faith. It happened one. You got pregnant again. Twice. Thrice. Four. It takes faith and hope to believe that it must happen my child. God brought the baby in her hand. So you now tell me that spiritual, leave it, it's not real. What I've seen. You see, experience eh, is stronger than argument. Experience, what you have experienced, what you have experienced like this. You don't argue, you just be looking at people who are talking. What has happened? How do you explain somebody went for visa interview? He got to his turn, he was sleeping. If you sleep, they wake you, you know, go poor eye. They beat him. They pour water. 
that they drag her. Is that sleep? You now tell me that this thing is not now not a sleep. Sleep? They pour water for a person, you know, wake up. They beat them, you know, wake up. Now sleep with that one. I mean, guy was gone. They shook him as they left him, collapsed on the ground, and packed himself. By the time his eyes open, people have left. They have, they have closed. They just carried him and dropped him outside. The one person said, don't worry, that thing that, that thing that happened to him, he said, he, said, he was tired. Huh? Huh? Sir, there was a power that seized him. When things are happening, don't try to downplay them that they are not real. There is something called spiritual world. Don't try to downplay them. Don't downplay them that they don't exist. They, re- they are real. But our, our, our leverage is that God in us is bigger than them. That's the difference. But to say that they are not real is, is, is deception. I pray for somebody. We are praying doing deliverance. Come out, come out. Somebody was screaming. Brrr, something left. And a car that nobody was driving was moving. I saw car moving. Car, they moved. You not tell me it's not real. A native doctor that lived near my mother's house. I was doing town cry. The man came out. I was insulting me. I insulted him too. Brethren were holding me back. Insult me, I insult him. Insult me, I insult him. And I was holding a bottle of Coke, Coca-Cola in my hand. His boys took it from me. He touched it with his ring. Before my eye, it changed color. I mean, this thing is black. Before my eye, it turned to orange color. He said, if you know that your Jesus is powerful, drink it. I dropped my megaphone. You know megaphone, this one. I dropped it, used my teeth. Uh, I spoke in tongues. And I drank it. I drank it. And I stood. He started laughing. And spoke in Bini Dale that in five minutes my stomach could be swollen. I was looking at him. I was speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. After five minutes, he said, ten minutes, they should watch me. I was looking at him. After ten minutes, he said, who knows my house? They should go and check my house. This night, what do we have? I said, ooh, you have no power. But sir, did he change color? He changed color. I saw it change. Then one person will come and tell me, but those things are not real. Okay, now. Okay, now. Okay, now. There's something called... Have you not seen people who are malams? They do things with Quran. You have not seen them? You are telling me that these things are... They will do it. They will do Yasi. They will read Karatu Arabic. Somebody will run mad. Eh? In those days, when we were schooling, young boys would carry a ring. If they slap you, start eating grass. Grass, grass. Like ram. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Use your teeth to cut grass. There's diabolic and there's supernatural power. Jesus walked on water. It's real. Fed 5,000 men, five loaves of bread, two fishes, real. Turn water to wine, real. There is power in Christ. So don't let somebody tell you that these things are not. You, I don't like the way you are looking at me. Oh. The way you just turn, you are looking at me. If you look at me like that again, they will throw you outside. Don't look at me like that. You're looking at me as if I'm owing you money. And I don't like the way that lady looks at me. Always looking at me with one kind of eye, one kind of. Please forgive me. Don't worry. Uh, you know better say I talk and say I keep up for mind. <laughs> I want to go to heaven. No, anything that you do me, I'll just say it so I can have peace with my life. I've always been suspecting that eye. So, and it's in my mind. So I have to say it now. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Sister, I decree the hand of God. Who is Rachel? Of Para. Is that your name? What's your name? Ma? Rachel of Para, sir. Stand up, mommy. Stand up. 
Mama, in the name of Jesus. Son of David, have mercy on her. Mommy, your whole body is on fire. Your whole body, your, especially your legs. Thank There's you, a serious attack, but God is going to heal you. 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 He's going to heal you. Huh? My older sister. Is your older sister? Yes, sir. God is going to heal you. Do you know Ike Duru? Ike Duru, sir. Ike Duru. Is that where you come from? 